All right, uh, this was sent into the channel by a, a gracious viewer. This is a mini GPS reference clock. So it's a it's a, a clock that's stabilized by looking at the GPS signal and over time adjusting it so that it's uh, so that's good accuracy. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it takes to get a, a perfect reading on these things. They're, they're quite good, I know. Um, I do know that when I first uh, was playing with this thing, I turned it on, it seemed to be about three hertz off uh, when I first plugged it in. And uh, now I went to lunch and it's been several hours and it's, it seems to be doing much better now. So I'm not quite sure how long all of that takes and what the settling time is and everything. There's probably a bunch of data on that online. Uh, but this is made by a company in the UK, uh, Leo, Leo Benar. Um, and so uh, this is the part. Um, is there a part number on this thing? I don't, I, I don't know. Um, they're not cheap, uh, 99 British pounds. Uh, so what's that, like uh, $130 or something? I'm not sure these days, I'm not sure what the... Uh... So another thing that I noticed, it, it, there's software also, you hook it up uh, USB and, and you can talk to this thing, you can configure what which uh, frequency you want to have output. It's programmable between 400 hertz and 810 megahertz, so it's programmed to, f to 10 megahertz, which is what I want, so I didn't touch it. I did play with a couple of the settings, though, because I was getting strange readings on my other um, frequency counter, and it seemed to, the output frequency seemed to vary depending on what the output drive level was. You can change the output drive level from 8 milliamps, 16 milliamps, up, up a little bit higher, um, and it seemed to be the most accurate at low drive levels at the 8, eight milliamp drive levels. Now, I don't know if that gets better over time or not, but, but that seemed a little bit strange. Uh, it says it's low jitter, blah, 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 blah. Um, so why do you want one of these things? Well, uh, they are small. See, so here's some data about it settling. Um, oh, and this is this is noise component. Uh, dB carrier versus divided by hertz versus hertz. So it gives you a, a kind of an idea of the phase noise. Um, oh, and here's a picture of the of the software if you want to load the software in. And this is the one here. You can change the drive level. Um, and it seemed to work best for me at eight, eight milliamps, just driving a, a, a counter. So it shouldn't need a lot. And, uh, what else can you do? Oh, here's where you set the frequency. So it's set to, to 10 megahertz and it automatically finds its serial number and stuff. Anything else in here? Uh, here's one on deviation versus time. Yeah, so 1,000 seconds, 10,000 seconds. So I guess it needs to run at least 1,000 seconds. So yeah, there you go. That's, a, because that's kind of what I was seeing, right? Uh, after a couple hours, it seemed to be working fine. But when I originally plugged it in, it was a bit off. Um, so uh, what's, what's the little box? Um, there's a, G a GPS antenna, OK? Zoom out a bit here. This is a GPS antenna on quite a long cord, and it says it supports uh, active antennas and, and passive antennas. I'm, I'm not sure uh, this is if this is active or not. Frequency range. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, this one's magnetic, um, and there's a USB mini to power it up. Five volts at 250 milliamps. Um, the GPS is connected with an SMA, and the output is SMA, so don't get this backwards. And so I have it hooked up. So the real, real experiment today is how good is it compared to a rubidium standard? So that's why you would buy one of these things. If you don't want to have the hassle of owning or buying, you kind of have to build your own rubidium standard. It's too expensive to buy a new one, so you buy a used one, you put it in a box, and... Um, and there's a, you know, you have to add a power supply and there's a bunch of work. So if you don't want to do all of that, or if you want it mobile, you know, you could take this with you. You could, you could carry it around. It's nice and small. 
Um, this is why you would want one of these things. So, um, yeah, let's go over to my setup. Okay, in my rack, uh, down, down below here is my rubidium standard. It's inside this box here. And it is a used rubidium standard out of a, um, a GPS or out of a, a cell site. Um, they want really accurate frequencies and stuff too. So you can get them used. They used to be around a hundred bucks. It seems like they've gone up in price, maybe around 200 bucks or something. I'm not sure what the current price is on those things, but you get the rubidium standard. You actually have to add a couple things. You need to add um, a power supply. They, they're, they're quite power hungry because uh, you have to heat up the, uh, heat up the, the uh, what's called the physics module in the rubidium standards. You need to heat them up so the, there's this plasma in there and you need to run them hot so they're nice and stable. So it requires a, a hefty power supply. It also re it gets quite hot. So when you get them, they don't have a heat sink attached to them. They're, they're, they're supposed to be bolted onto a heat sink. So you have to, you have to supply your own heat sink too. So anyway, like I said, there's a bit of a D DIY things going on here. These little, these little lights here tell you whether you have the lock, the rubidium lock or not. And uh, mine do some flashy, flashy things. I, I put a little Arduino in there to, 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 to put in some flashies to make it look, to look nice. When you first turn it on, you'll get the weight LED. And then once you get a lock, it, it'll, it'll turn on the green LED and, and, and flash. Um, and that's just a, 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 a pin on the rubidium standard that you have to monitor and know that you're locked. So when you first turn the rubidium on, it's way off in frequency and it'll be super high and then bang, it'll go super low and it kind of fluctuates up and down and up and down. And then once you get the lock, then it's, then it's solid and you, and you can use it. Um, the other thing that I added to my rubidium standard is a, a video, ampl uh, video distribution amp. So it takes the rubidium standard frequency, the 10 megahertz, and splits it four or five ways, and I route them different places. So one of them gets routed to this connector right here, so I have 10 megahertz available right here. And then one of them gets routed over to my uh, frequency counter, so we can use it there. Okay, so like I said, the 10 megahertz comes into this thing on the back, and so it's not using its internal... Uh, uh, oscillator. It's using it's using the rubidium uh, external oscillator, and here we're getting ten point zero 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 zero. So let's uh, let's get one more zero here. Let me turn up the gate. There we go. We've got another zero. So those are hertz. Okay. So this is measuring the output of the uh, of the uh, reference clock, the the uh, GPS thing, and so it's certainly within uh, seems to be within a hertz, just fine, uh, to the rubidium. And then let's take a look at subhertz. Let's turn up the let's turn up the gating. Let's try to get another digit out of this thing. There we go. So there we go. So those are tenths of hertz. Okay, so it's good to tenths of hertz. And let's see how far we can take this counter. I don't know if it can go one more decimal places or not. Uh, we probably have about a 10 second gate on it now, so we'll have to wait a while. Yeah, there we go. There was that was a gate. You can watch the gate fire. So I guess this is as good as we that we can get on this machine. So we are within tenths of hertz. So um, certainly for anything in my garage, this is good to go. <laughs> well, there you go. I couldn't get any more uh, uh, decimal places out of my frequency counter other than uh, tenths of hertz. Um, so that's uh, that's awfully good, and it was zero. I mean, it's, it was just it seemed to be just spot on. So these things seem to be quite well. I mean, they should uh, lock to the to the GPS. I think the only uh, downside to these is there is a settling time, so you have to make sure that you have this on for a while. The rubidium standard do, does take a while to turn on as well. It might take oh, several minutes for it to warm up, and this might take several hours for it to warm up, um, and um, but if you keep it on, right, uh, or or you know ahead of time to to turn things on, a lot of times when you're when you need this type of accuracy, you're calibrating an instrument or something. You need the instrument to warm up a couple hours anyway. So I think when you turn this on and you turn your frequency counter on and you're going to adjust the two of them, I think they're both going to be warmed up at the at the same length of time. So yeah, I can rec I can rec rec recommend these things. Oh, there's the guys uh, the company's uh, logo on the back. Didn't see that. Um, yeah, they seem to be kind of cute. 
Um, not sure I have a use for this, but uh, it was fun. I've always been curious whether whether these were as good as the rubidium and, and how the two would uh, how the two would track. Um, but they do they just do seem pretty good, and it also I think validates my frequency uh, my um, uh, my rubidium standard as well. If these two things agree within tenths of hertz um, at a ten megahertz signal, I think uh, I think like I said, good enough for garage work. All right, let's take a look inside. Uh, there seems to be two shielded cages here, and I'm not sure what exactly is going on. I believe this is the GPS receiver here under this can, and I believe this is a, uh, a temperature-controlled uh, oscillator here, a reference oscillator. And this is a microprocessor to talk and, and, and do everything talk over the USB and then and then do all of this uh, this uh, fancy stuff uh, get the information from the GPS get the uh, phase information to you know redo everything and then control this chip so this chip is let's see first of all the microprocessor is an 18f 24k50 uh, microchip and this is a si 5328g. Um, so that's about all there is into it. One of the fancy things that I saw though was uh, the routing of the PC board, this little cutout here. So uh, I believe that this is just a frequency standard, right? This is a, a VCO, I mean, not VCO, a, 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 a oven, oven controlled OX, whatever they are, oven controlled oscillator. Um, and they have routed it away from this board to reduce the thermal mass here. So. Uh, it will be isolated thermally from everything else and then RF isolated from the top. So yeah, pretty nice little design. Somebody was thinking about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's what's inside.